Um, good evening from Doha. Masa al khair, as they say here. You're very welcome. I'm going to give a brief overview on some aspects of shoe surface uh, interaction in football. A little bit of a focus on uh, what happens between the studs of the shoe and the surface you're playing on uh, and some surrogate mechanical measures that we might be able to, uh, to gather from there. So, when considering shoe and surface interaction, it's probably good to ask the players what, what they like. And uh, Mears did exactly that in, a, in Sports Medicine, a, a journal in 2018, where she asked a large cohort of professional players what they thought of uh, the playing surface and if it posed any injury, f uh, any increase for injury risk. 91% of the players said they thought that surface can increase injury. Um, when pushed on what properties, they said hard, bumpy, inconsistent surfaces, or high and low grip. Um, they also mentioned that the, the type or condition of playing surface alters the, the, the footwear that they might ultimately put on their, on their feet. So this is a consideration for the athletes. So what is this shoe and surface interaction we're talking about? Um, when an athlete pushes on the surface, there needs to be enough resistance for that surface to push back, so to speak. Um, there needs to be enough grip so that when uh, you're trying to produce either horizontal or vertical force that the player can accelerate, decelerate and then perform their turns. But what we're interested in is there an optimal zone of traction or surface hardness that the athlete can perform these movements um, to the best of their ability without uh, increasing their subsequent injury risk. Now friction is really a resistance to two bodies passing each other and it's often called traction when studded shoes are involved. There's two components of traction, uh, often measured uh, linear or translational traction, which is in a straight line, uh, very important for accelerating and decelerating. And then there's rotational traction, and this is the one that is often considered uh, to possibly increase injury risk. Athletes will say, uh, when you ask them about their mechanism of injury, uh, that they felt like their foot got stuck on the surface or wouldn't release or got caught in the surface. So Dracos uh, and colleagues looked at some cadavers and, and put these cadavers in different shoe and surface combinations and found that in high friction or high traction shoe and surface combinations, there was a very high load on the ligaments and a very high rotational torque stress. This has been done with athletes as well in a lab-based setting by Sinclair, where athletes ran and turned 100, 180 degrees over a force plate. And the combination where there was a high uh, friction or or traction between the shoe and surface put more, much more strain on the ACL when they were turning. The lower, lower friction shoe and surface combination put less. Interestingly, translational, the straight line traction, seemed to matter a little less to this relationship. So if we go back to our player and we try to work out how or when or why they might get injured, we know there's an awful lot of uh, other factors that can come into this relationship. So why look at shoe and surface um, factors in detail? Well, I guess, for one, they could be modifiable. Once we get close to game time, one of the few uh, things an athlete has control over is what they can put on their feet. And also, we can talk to the groundsmen about how they prepare training venues and match venues. So we wanted to start by seeing, is there any evidence out there? We conducted a systematic review and found that there were three studies in which uh, they've gone out and objectively measured the traction between the shoe and the surface. So they've rotated a shoe and picked up the amount of torque that there is and then looked at the injury rates. These three sports were in American football and over those three studies there was around 5,000 male athletes once they were pooled. If the shoe and surface came together to make high traction when you group the athletes, you're over two and a half times more likely to be injured. So there were three studies. Um, one looked at ACL injuries, severe knee injuries, and then all lower limb injuries, which happened to mostly be uh, ankle syndesmosis and, and knee ACL injuries. And when you pool those, you're about 2.7 times more likely to sustain an injury if you're in a high traction uh, shoe and surface combination. Interestingly, there was no studies for soccer football that had done this, um, and only injury data within the NFL. So if you look at one of the studies, uh, where they went out and got the athlete's shoes, took them around to the playing surfaces they actually played on, and then looked at the injury rate. We found the low traction group had this many injuries, and the high traction group had a quite alarming uh, increase in injuries. So what might that look like? The best way to see that 
is in a boundary area or an area where there is a certain amount of shoe surface traction and then possibly a higher uh, amount across the sideline. So here we have a natural grass uh, hybrid reinforced pitch. The player is looking at the ball uh, and possibly the, player, the other player pressing, steps over the sideline onto a higher friction surface and has an inversion ankle injury. I'm happy to say that the federations here at our stadiums that will happen in 2022, so the stakeholders like FIFA and the turf companies uh, that are preparing these stadiums have decided to make sure that there's five meters of sideline uh, in, the, in the match stadiums, so players have ample room to decelerate in those areas, and also three meters at the training sites. So hopefully we don't have these boundary areas. Of course, grass uh, is a living, breathing thing, and there'll be different uh, conditions within a single pitch, but this is a, a great leap forward. Now, we also know that grass species can, um, can affect the shoe surface traction and possibly go on to affect injury rate. And in Australian rules football, this was a case where rye grass, a cool season grass, um, showed less injuries or fewer injuries than Bermuda grass, which is a warm season grass. And that was put down to uh, climatic factors and possible shoe surface interaction. This was also um, uh, seen in European football uh, with uh, the warmer climate zones showing more ACL injuries and ankle sprains and the cooler climate zones having more Achilles tendon injuries. So we wanted to see here in Doha, what happens over a season with any of these different grass species changes or different surface uh, condition changes. So over the course of a season on the national team training venue, we measured the hardness of the pitch, the, the moisture content in the, in the soil, humidity, uh, temperature, all different climatic factors. And we also measured the rotational traction. So we dragged around our, uh, our machine, rotated the shoes, and got an objective number for torque measured in Newton meters. We tested six different shoes. Some of these shoes had small round studs and what's known as the AG outsole group or artificial grass group. Other uh, shoes had some blades or, or round studs or combinations of both in the firm ground outsole group. And then uh, finally, the soft ground outsole group had uh, tapered conical metal screw in studs. So just to show you the profile, uh, small and round and, and, and lots of them, um, bladed and a little bit longer, and then the, the screw-in metal studs that we were all familiar with for softer ground. So what we did was we measured these groups. Um, the soft ground studs are here, the gray group, um, and we looked at the rotational traction. So on the vertical axes, the higher you go up on this axis, the higher the traction was um, or the harder it was for that shoe to release from the surface. We see in January, all the groups drop down. So the bottom group is this small AG outsole group, and they're the lowest for the whole season, but they drop down considerably in January. And that's because we have that cooler grass, that rye grass that was mentioned, that seems to have lower rotational traction. So it does seem that over these different months, you can tune in the shoe you're wearing to try and uh, attempt to get the, the desired traction between your shoe and surface um, as need be. So from there, we asked a lot of uh, physiotherapists and podiatrists that are involved in the game today uh, at some of the elite sports, uh, elite clubs, and uh, also different football codes. And we really wanted to see what they thought about football shoes as you return to on-field rehab. In this case, we talked about ACL after ACL reconstructions, but we also had a good chat about ankle syndesmosis injuries. And at the end of this chat, it's, uh, it's open access, it's online at the Aspatar Journal, should you want to go into it. At the end of this chat with all the experts, we thought the pragmatic advice was to recommend that players stay in these smaller uh, round studs for their on-field rehab work in an attempt to decrease the rotational traction. Um, we would like their translational traction or their straight line traction to stay high so they can uh, you know, not slip but this should decrease or minimize their risk of injury going forward. Um, and then they can start to move up through the shoe categories uh, as need be. So the recommendation is athletes should select footwear that has the lowest rotational traction values for which no de detriment and performance results. We certainly don't want to see athletes slip, but if it's a, a pre-season sponsor event rather than the, the World Cup final, I think there's a risk reward um, question there. So until we can get some of this information to people, 
One way to, uh, to judge what's happening at this shoe and surface interface is to have athletes use their intuition, try on a pair of shoes, run a, a, a traction course um, in a given time, and then rate how they think that felt, whether that was too much traction, not enough, or just right. And then they can choose these outsoles that they prefer. Now, just a quick note that no matter which boot you're contracted with, now you can actually get the, the studs that you want in each of, uh, in each of those categories. So um, it's not a, a, you don't have to change down. You can you have the, the, let's say, kangaroo leather or the upper that you like um, and just ask your athlete services for the outsole that might suit. And that's exactly what Harry Kane was doing here just before the Champions League final, um, the day before in the captain's run, if you like. He's testing out his soft ground shoe after running a traction course, testing out his firm ground shoe and seeing which feels good to him. So I think player intuition is, is very important. So summing up, the ground staff are key. They really are collecting a lot of data that we could tap into and try and understand how our shoes can, um, can work along with that information. I think we could use a functional traction course to subjectively rate football shoes. And I also think it boils down to not using a high traction shoe with a high traction surface. There's two things to come in to make this interaction and we can tune that uh, to our advantage. Thank you.